Hello, my friends. Kevin the Comic Doctor coming to you with a late video, a late live video. We're going to talk a little bit about Hawkeye, right? We just finished watching it. You know, we come on here to talk about comic books, but you know what? When, when, uh, when Disney Plus or any of our favorite studios put out uh, material or, or content, we want to talk about it here and see what we think. Well, you know what? I just finished watching the first two episodes. I thought I'd get on here and chat with you guys about it. See what you thought about it too, if enough of you come online. But I got my notes here. I wrote down some notes and I want to talk a bit about it because... If you watch me on Robert Meyer Burnett's show the other day, and he asked me the question, what I think of Phase 4 so far, I, uh, yeah, I haven't been too, um, I think the word I use is underwhelmed. I haven't been, you know, I haven't gone crazy about, I, I'm not thinking these have been the best shows I've ever seen. Now, do I like them? Yes, I do like them. Did I like Hawkeye overall? Yes. But it, boy, did it have some problems. It had some problems. I'm going to talk about first what I liked about it. All right. Uh, and first off, I'm going to say, and, and you guys, you know, pipe up too. I want to hear what you think. I know there's a few, few of you in the chat room already. Uh, by all means, let me know what you thought of it. And also, if you agree or disagree with what I'm, what I'm about to say here, because I know that the, the show actually has a very good rating, rating on Rotten Tomatoes right now. Uh, so most people seem to like it. But let's talk about what I liked. Right off the bat, again, this is a spoiler discussion, guys. So I'm going to talk about everything. So if you haven't seen it yet and you don't want it to be spoiled, maybe you want to hit the road. But anyways, first off, uh, I love the opening. The recreation of uh, the Chitauri attack on New York was awesome. I liked seeing it from a different perspective, from uh, the, the perspective of the little girl up up in her New York, uh, you know, high rise, half her building's gone and she's seeing the explosions and the fight. And of course, specifically, she sees Hawkeye, who inadvertently, I guess, uh, saves her life. And, uh, you know, at her at her dad's funeral, if her dad's dead, we don't know that yet, really. But at her dad's funeral, she says, uh, you know, what do you want? Her mom asked her what she wants. She goes, I want, I need a bow and arrow. So she was obviously inspired by what Hawkeye did for her. And that was really cool. So I liked seeing that. Uh, my family didn't like the young lady playing a young Kate Bishop, my daughter and my wife. She's the kid was irritating. She didn't like, I mean, maybe that's kind of mean. I don't know. They didn't care for the little girl uh, playing a young Kate Bishop. Um, but luckily she was only in it for about 15 minutes. If that, if that, right? So um, the opening, awesome. Loved it. I thought it was off to a great start. I really enjoyed that. Next, um, <laughs> Rogers the Musical. The Steve Rogers musical was freaking hilarious. Uh, I'm a musical theater. I, I, I've been a musical theater teacher for many years. My wife is a musical theater teacher. We're big fans of musicals. And to see um, to see that was quite funny. And we saw clips of it, right, in the, uh, in the previews. But to actually see the musical. And actually, the guy playing Captain Rogers, I believe, was uh, the dude who played Roger in Rent, in Bro Rent on Broadway. So I recognized his voice, and I think it, I'm pretty sure it was him. I, I got to look that up, but I'm pretty sure it was him. But it was funny, the Hulk, and how you know the costumes they were wearing, and it was just the most corniest thing. And my wife was kind of making fun of it because uh, she went and saw Spider Man the musical when it came out, and it flopped bad, right? Spider Man the musical on Broadway did not do well, um, but it had lots of ropes and characters bouncing around, and so she said they're kind of poking fun at that, and I think they they probably were. So that was kind of funny. So that was quite enjoyable. It was also nice to see, um, well, it was nice to see, but we get to see, um, I wrote it down here, Clint's, kind of Clint's humanity coming through, right? Like his, he's a man. He's not a, he's a superhero. They call him a superhero. And guys, I'm talking kind of low because some of my kids are in bed, so I'm not speaking very loud. So I hope you can hear me okay. Um, but to see Clint as a man, uh, what the... His, his work with the Avengers has, has done to him mentally and physically, right? He's still obviously traumatized uh, from the events of Endgame, losing uh, Natasha, and, you know, just seeing seeing another actress playing her up on stage brought back memories, and he was kind of zoning out there. And so it was hard for him to see that, and also notice he had a hearing aid in, the, in this show too. So he's got a hearing aid, so we see that he actually has been suffering quite a bit uh, physically from his adventures with the Avengers. So that was kind of cool. I like to see that. And and also seeing him with his family, trying to reconnect was nice too. Um, I don't think any of his kids look like him or Linda Carnavali, her name. I think the actress who plays Cardinale. 
I don't know, the, the, the woman who plays his wife. The kids don't look like either of them, I think. So I don't know. They, they cast those kids when they were very young and now they're teenagers and they look nothing like Renner or Carnivale. Cardinale? I don't know. I forget her name. Um, so those things are good. I also like uh, also like that moment at the Chinese restaurant when when they're having their uh, their, their dinner there, their their New York dinner, and um, you know they they get the food for free, and then the waiter comes over, the owner says that it's on us because you know you're you saved our city, and just I don't know little moments like that I like you know where people re- respect him and, and respond to him because of what he he did. Um, so that was really great too. Um, oh, <laughs> the medieval LARPing was funny too. The when when uh, when Clint had to dress up in medieval gar- uh, garb to get his Ronin costume back, and he actually participated in this in this LARPing uh, uh, event to get his stuff back, and it kind of showed a connection with him and the fella he meets, the fireman he meets. I got a feeling we're going to see him again as well, um, but it was just kind of nice to to see him do that. That was funny, the slow motion, him using the sword, the fake swords, and such, and it was really really quite fun and his patience you know when the guy asked him to you know make it look real and so he did and that was quite funny so I, I really enjoyed that um so those are the main points parts of the film of, of the of the show that i really liked let's go over to the 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 chat window as a few of you over there right now and if you if you're here guys we wouldn't mind hitting that like button that'd be fantastic while you're here you, you wouldn't mind let's go over to the chat window and see oh, no one's saying anything there's no conversations at all What's going on with that? Nobody has anything to say about. Did anybody not? Has anybody seen Hawkeye yet? Let me know in the in the uh, in the chat section there. We'll get a conversation going here. Okay, we'll go back and I'll tell you what I did not like about it. There's a lot more I didn't like uh, than. Oh well, yeah, probably. Um, let's talk about Kate Bishop. Uh, I love the actress uh, who plays Kate Bishop, and I had her name called up here. I, it's it's. Um, Haley Steinfeld. Haley Steinfeld. I, I like her as an actress. I loved her in Bumblebee. I thought she was great in that. And I do like her in this, but I just think... <sighs> this is her show, right? This is her show. It's not Jeremy Renner's show. And we're going down that damn road again where we're being force-fed characters before we get a chance to get to know them. And I think that is a big no-no. Huge no-no. You don't want to be uh, shoving characters down audiences' throats and expecting us just to love them automatically. That, to me, is a, is, a, is a bad thing to do, okay? And if you've watched any of my chats in the past, you know I've talked about things like, um, I, I usually use Star Wars as an example. You know, Ray, Pin, and uh, Pin. Ray, Poe, and Finn, right? These new characters in Star Wars. Instead of giving us Luke, Han, and Leia to, to, to lead the show and then bring in these new characters, they just force feed these new characters down our throats and expect us to take them, you know, with open arms and forget about all the other characters that we love so much. My, I enjoyed this show more when Renner was on, Renner was on, was on screen, obviously. Um, like I said, I do like her as an actress. I just don't think we had enough time to get to know her character. And I think that's a big mistake that they're not having Jeremy Renner lead this show and introduce her. I think it opened really great with the two of them, the way that her, her little girl and him doing his Avengers thing. But I think they should have spent more time uh, with us getting to know her. And they didn't do that. And that's that's a hard pill to swallow for me as a viewer. I want to, I want to like these characters, but why should I like these characters? What have we really learned about her? Uh, you know, she's a... A, a, a dumb kid at university who, who destroys school property, comes home... It's just it's a spoiled brat. Great, you know. I, I need to see more than that. Uh, so that was a big problem, you know. And again, I always say, look at Cobra Kai. You know, look at Cobra Kai. Look at uh, franchises that did it right, bringing in new characters into an existing franchise, and then taking the time to let audiences get to know the new characters and to care about those new characters, so that when the show finally is kind of given over to them, we're we're acceptable. We're accepting of that, you know. Um, you know, uh, Creed did it well as you know in, in the Rocky franchise as well. Um, you know, they pay, they gave us a lot of Stallone in that movie, and, and we got to know uh, Adonis really well. And we, get, we by the end of that film, we're on board with that character, right? Um, same thing with uh, again. I mentioned Cobra Kai. You know, 
you get a lot of Johnny and a lot of um, uh, Daniel in that first season of Cobra Kai. They're probably 50 to 60% of the show is them. Uh, and that's a good thing because we recognize them. And we love those characters. So then all these other new characters, the kids, the younger, the younger uh, cast, we get to know them too. And then by the second season and by the third season, we actually give a crap about them. And that's where I think now, guys, guys, it's only two episodes have gone by. I get that. I understand there's going to be a lot more that we're going to um, see, but I think they should have spent more time uh, dealing with her as a, as a as a character and um and less time with that stupid stupid track suit mafia that's another thing i didn't like too um the, the track suit mafia was ridiculous i thought they were just a bunch of bozos and you know it, it's okay to have some some comic relief don't get me wrong but 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 there there's there's like i can't believe these guys would be threatening to anybody they're too stupid. Their, their characters were really dumb, and that was really, really irritating. So I didn't care about that either. I thought that uh, it, was, it was ridiculous. Uh, they weren't believable at all. Uh, that was irritating. I also didn't like, um, you know, like a lot of inconsistencies in this, in this uh, series as well too. Like how they find her. Like how do they find her place the second time around? Like, she has a quick little fight with them in the in the streets, a brawl. She takes off. Well, they, her name was on a bag or something, I think that she said. But then they followed. Like, like how did they get to her? I don't know. I just it was, it was ridiculous. And they're going to stand outside of her place, just call her name, and they just go in and get her instead of drawing all that attention to themselves. It was kind of stupid. That dog, the one eyed dog. Hey, I like dogs. Dogs are great. I got two dogs myself. But that dog was kind of stupid. So she picks this dog up, brings it home. It's a stray dog, all dirty and gross. Brings it into her house. And you know, she just got back from school and she walks into the apartment and gives a dog a pizza. So the pizza's in the fridge. Well, how'd that pizza get in that fridge? I don't understand that. I thought she went straight to her mother's house, but now there's pizza in the fridge. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't get that. So she, the dog eats the pizza and then she leaves and leaves the dog in her house. So I'm going to go, I'm going to let a stray dog free in my home to roam around and do whatever it wants. Just stuff like that. It's kind of stupid, right? And as, as the show progressed, the dog got cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. So I guess they had time to groom the dog during all this. I know maybe I'm being picky, but that kind of stuff bugs me. I want to, you know, didn't make any sense. Um, <clears throat> um, what else? And also the, yeah, the fight, Kate Bishop's fight with the, with the, with this, with this uh, tracksuit mafia. And uh, it's with the tracksuit mafia also in the, um, in the auction house. I just don't believe, I don't think she's got a, you know, she's supposed to be a black belt and all this sort of thing. Maybe seeing some of that training would have helped me believe that she was able to fight these guys the way she did, but she was taking on guys that are like probably three times her size and more than one. And yeah, she's uh, going to be a superhero, but she's not a superhero yet. And her abilities to fight these guys off, I don't know. It just it was I, it's totally unbelievable. And then the streets when she was fighting them. Didn't make any sense to me. Then she's running around the streets with that Ronin costume. But well, why would she keep that Ronin costume on the whole time? I, I didn't understand that. Take the, you did what you had to do. Now take it off. She went home and kept the freaking Ronin costume on. I, I don't understand why she would do that. Uh, so I didn't believe the fight scenes. They just they weren't believable at all. I think they would have killed her. They punch her. They punch her in the side three times. One scene. This guy punches in the ribs like one, two, three, and she gets up. And that guy. And the guy was a monster. One shot, and she would have probably been on been going to the hospital. So yeah, I, I didn't buy that at all. Um, yeah, so she survives the fights. Um, also, why did Clint stay at the end? Why did Clint stay at the end? His, his family goes home. He puts them in a, in a, in a limousine and he stays there to get the, the Ronin suit. Why? Why do you want the Ronin suit? Who cares? It's gone. Who gives a crap where it was? You didn't have it before. Who cares that it's out there? It's, it's, it, it was, I was dumb. And then, so he spends all this time looking for this Ronin suit, which made no sense to me at all. Again, like what's the importance of this Ronin suit? Strange, man. Strange. Uh, so again, a lot of inconsistencies and a lot of, um, <sighs> I think they're good together. I think that Renner and Steinfeld are good together. They 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 bounce. They, they work with each other really well. Their chemistry is good. But again, I think there needed to be more time spent developing her skills and what she'd been through. You know, her dad dies, and then we don't you know we don't see any of that growth of that character. And that I think it really is 
is we need to see that and we didn't see that. that's my biggest complaint about the show anyways do i like it yeah yeah i'll probably give it like a a, a c plus b minus which is okay and to be quite on i'll tell you after i saw that opening scene i was like this is the one i was really excited i was like this is gonna be awesome and then it just kind of mm. let's talk about some of the other characters let's talk about her mother who's obviously the bad guy, right? The mother's obviously the bad guy. The mother has just got too many secrets going on there. Hey, Luke, how's it going? Did you happen to see uh, the Hawkeye series yet? I'd like to hear your opinion on that too. My, my opinion's great and everything, but I want to hear what you, what you guys have to think about it too. I know there's a few guys watching, so speak up in the chat section. Let me know what you think of the new Hawkeye show if you have had the opportunity to see it yet. And if you haven't seen it yet, I just spoiled a whole bunch of that show. Maybe that's what you wanted. Maybe you wanted someone to spoil it and let you know what they think before you go in and see it. Too much... Oh, let's see what Luke is saying there. I can't see that, Luke. I'm going to call up your your chat really quickly. So I guess you have seen it by the sounds of it. Too much conven- conveniences? Is that what you're saying? Too much conveniences? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, things just kind of fall into place really nicely for them. It was Everything was too much convenience. There was no, no one was working hard for anything, you know? And even the part where, where, even though I liked the LARPing scene where he dressed up like a, a, as a medieval warrior, you know, he goes in, looks for his, his 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 costume. It's not there, and he sees a little sticker on the on the fire fire truck. Well, that's pretty convenient. And then, yeah, that has to be the answer. That's got to be where it is, you know. Yeah, a lot of conveniences. It was kind of kind of eh. Bronzeville comments. Just watched, enjoyed it quite a bit. So. Love the first scene where she saw his iconic scene from her point of view. I, like I said earlier, I loved that scene, man. Bronzeville, I agree with you. That was probably, again, if you were watching from the beginning of this video, that was one of my favorite scenes. Um, I thought it was off to a really strong start when I saw that. I really, really did. It was awesome. Um, I wish it was more of more of that, you know. Luke, maybe a little con- con- convinces with the, with the gang stuff. He has a good... He has good timing, yeah, really, you know. And, and you know what's interesting about that too is like this, this, this. He's so concerned about this, um, this tracksuit mafia thing, right? That he lets them, he lets them catch him, gag, you know, put a thing on his head and tie him up and bring them, bring him to their their lair. And it's almost like they're a joke. It's like they're they're just this, these these bozos who have they're, they're just senseless bozos, right? And. He's sitting there. He gets out of the thing, no problem. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they pull the guns on. He's still cracking jokes. And he, he just can't take these guys seriously. And I get it's a Disney Plus show. I get that they can't make it too heavy. You can't make it that dark. I get it. But you turn these guys into a bunch of clowns. They were clowns. It was not It was totally unbelievable at all. Um, and, and even him, like, why would you care if these guys are out there? Like, why would you stay? You know, being with your family is all important, but he's going to stay and deal with these these numbskulls, that's a good word, numbskulls, an old word, numbskulls, and that's exactly what they were, right, um, you know, uh, now, Bronzeville Comics, you, you, you enjoyed it quite a bit, what other parts did you, did you, is there anything about the, the, the series that you found was a little bit, like, like Luke was saying, a little convenient, a little off, you know, maybe there's some inconsistencies there, did you, did you find, did you, did you grow attached to, uh, the the Kate Bishop character quickly because I I did not that was my biggest that was my biggest I think demerit point for this series so far is that we don't know her we don't know her why is a Ronin suit so important to him exactly exactly just okay you figured it out the girl who had the suit you have her there the suit is gone now let the guy who's larping keep it who gives a crap he's just gonna use it to larp you know. He's not going to run around the streets, you know, with it. Who gives a crap? So, yeah, I could understand why he'd stick around just for that. And then he tells her, I got to I got to deal with these guys because they, you know, I've got a lot of enemies out there. Yeah, it's just a very weak, again, guys, it all, it all goes back to writing, right? And I just don't understand how writing and planning things out, it, it's very frustrating to me. Um, there, was a, there was a lot in the series that I think keeps me wanting to watch more, but it just... The stakes, the stake, it just seems silly. And the stakes just seem silly. You know, what's the point? I'm hoping that, that, I'm hoping they pay that off. Well, so do I. They better, man. I hope so. Like, well, what's the point? 
What's the freaking point? And that's that's the frustrating part of it. This is my first time for Kate Bishop. Never read the comic storyline. Neither have I. Never have. She got her first appearance. Her first appearance is in the Young Avengers. And I think, uh, and like Robert Meyer Burnett was saying, she was also, also appeared in the West Coast Avengers. But I've never read her storyline. And I'm going to tell you, again, if they're trying to set up the Young Avengers, which I'm pretty damn sure that's what's going on here, uh, why not take the time to hash out these characters properly, right? You know, if you think back to what they did with the with the Marvel Universe early on, with you know the Iron so Iron Man solo movie, with uh, the uh, Thor solo movie, Captain America, and then we get into the Avengers. I'm not saying you have to give these characters solo movies before they join a team, but if you've got to, if you, you know what, I, I just, I would have made her, a, I would have made her a secondary character in this, and I would have focused on Hawkeye, and I would have done two seasons of this. If if you're trying to build her up for a Young Avengers. Uh, movie, which I think is what they're doing. Like I said, I would have, I would have ha- had the movie focus on Hawkeye, then bringing her in, training her, and giving her uh, some some credibility, and then bring that, and then then when the Young Avengers comes about, there she is, you know. But nope. No, they shove her down our throats right away. She's an expert, you know, she's an expert martial artist and she's an expert, you know, sleuth. She can figure things out. She can she can shake people off their tails and she's an expert archer and she's perfect, perfect, perfect. And she's ready to be a superhero right off the bat. Uh, it just drives me crazy, you know? What do they call that? You know, when the person knows everything and can do everything. A Mary Sue, uh, you know, is she a Mary Sue? Pretty damn close. Uh, Luke says, this is, okay, no, sorry, Bronzeville. Unless there is some reason it would connect back to his identity. But but it hasn't. It hasn't before, right? He he left that Ronin thing, that guys, for years. And it even, even uh, the, in the news, they said, we haven't seen him for a long time. He disappeared. He's, he's not been around. No one connected him with Ronin. So why all of a sudden is this, you think there's a little, um, maybe there's a collar. It says, you know, on, on his, on his you know, property of Hawkeye property of clint barton no it's all anonymous so who gives a crap again stupid that 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 really bothered me um i read hawkeye number one with her on the yellow cover and and the first two episodes of the other hawkeye series that introduces the dog the dog is important i think right um i did think the fight scenes were very well done i thought the fight scenes um like I said, the opening was fantastic. I thought her fight scenes were kind of again. I just didn't believe them. I just didn't believe them. She's too. She she just. They should have showed her training. They should have showed us what she could do. You know, her mom has that one off the cuff. Well, I'm so proud of you. You got your black belt by the time you were 15. Okay, great. Um, show us, show us some of that training. Show us, show us, show us Kate Bishop when she's you know. 12 show us kate bishop when she's 17 show us kate bishop in high school then show us kate bishop when she's in university causing trouble and destroying school property like show us the build up to that show us her growth and so that when i do see her fight finally i do believe it because i just didn't believe it those guys were huge I, even though they were a bunch of morons those guys those, those russian dudes were huge there's no way she would have taken those guys down uh Three, uh, Luke, with the mom be the bad guy or is it the fiance? I think it is the mother, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised if the father is still out there somewhere, or or else she killed the father. I think the mother killed Armando. Is that his name, Armando, the uh, the dude's uncle? Now, I did some reading. Apparently, the guy with the mustache, Jack, her her her, her soon to be stepfather, he is the swordsman in the comic books. He's the swordsman and apparently an ally to Hawkeye. So. Um, I think they put him in there as a kind of as a kind of to, to, to divert our attention away from the mother to make us think that he's the bad guy when in actuality it's the mom, right? Um, even Armando said was was yelling at the mother and saying, you know, how bad of a person she was and she was evil. So there's lots going on that we don't know about, obviously. But yeah, the mom is definitely the bad guy uh, in the comics. I guess I say this already in the comics, the father was the bad guy, but they're maybe they're swapping that out. I don't know. Um, yeah. So we'll see. So they're going to play around with that. I think uh, I think it's Lucky the Pizza Dog or something. <laughs> well, there was Lucky there was a piece of pizza a piece of pizza in that fridge for the poor dog to eat, but the pizza might have been there for three months because no one had been in that apartment yet. So I'm curious how that pizza was there. Uh, uh, Bronzeville says. 
His mom sewed his name into the suit so he wouldn't lose it at Avengers Camp. Exactly. That's why he had to get it back. Because if he didn't, they'd know he was he was Ronan. And then no longer would Hawkeye be a, um, a, a sensation or a hero. He'd be a villain and, you know, he'd lose all those free Chinese dinners. Chinese food dinners. I am. Hey, I am. Welcome to the show. Uh, the reason Clint was after the Ronin suit uh, is the enemies he created while wearing the suit. He didn't want anyone to get hurt for what he's done. Yeah. By, by accidentally wearing it? Is that what you mean? Again, the suit was already out there. Uh, again, I don't even know why this... I, I just... I just yeah. The Ronin suit. How how the Ronin suit even get into their hands? I don't know. I, I don't know. I I, I think that's a, a a weak story plot for him to stay or stick around. If there was something that Ro, that he did as Ronin, and because he did it, someone was someone innocent was going to be hurt by it, then I could see him uh, sticking around to, to finish some unfinished business. But because of suits out there, and why these 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 guys are that dumb to see a kid running around in a Ronin suit? They're gonna think that, that kid is Ronin. I, I don't know. I just don't buy it. Just like Galactus with the big G on his suit in FF forty nine. We've got to let everybody know I'm Galactus. I'm Galactus. You know. Uh, so yeah, guys. I don't know. I I think it was again an all right series. I'm really interested to see where it goes. But I'm gonna tell you, all these Disney Plus series to me have been. Again, underwhelming. I don't know if they're really going to have any significant impact on the greater Mar MCU. And they better. They better, right? Like what's happening in WandaVision? What's happening in, in, the, in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Is that going to really have an impact on the, on, the, on the MCU proper, the MCU cinematic universe, right? And um, we'll see. It's kind of like going back when we, when we used to have that, that uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show that was on. It was a terrible, terrible show. But at first, it was supposed to, inter- it was supposed to be um, intertwined with the MCU, but they decided that wasn't going to be the case. And even the Netflix, Daredevil and uh, Luke Cage and Iron Fist and all those shows were supposed to also inter- be intertwined with the MCU. But now they're saying, no, it is not. Um, I hope these shows really... Well, these shows obviously have connections because the actors from the movies are in them, but... Are they going to really impact the greater MCU? Uh, we're yet to see that, right? We haven't seen a real tie-in. I think the the, the big test is going to be when we see uh, uh, the Spider-Man uh, No Way Home, because it's a multiversal type of um, uh, of, sh- of movie, uh, which will then lead into Doctor Strange: The Multitude of Ma- uh, the Multitude. <laughs> The multiverse, it's, it's late guys, the multiverse of madness, maybe we're going to see some tie-in with WandaVision. If we don't, if we don't see tie-ins to these TV series, then there's going to be a mini revolt, I think. I really do. I think if these if these guys don't pay, if there's no payout, like you mentioned, with these with these series in the in the bigger MCU, the greater MCU, then people are going to be like, well, why the hell are you putting these, these things out on TV? So I'm curious to see how it does pay out. I, I just find them underwhelming. They just... They just even Falcon Winter Soldier was there. Was some don't get me wrong. There's some good episodes and some good moments in there. I really liked it. You know the the fight with the the, the, the with the um, Dermalage and uh, you know when um, uh, what's his name um, uh, what's his face the the the, the full Captain America the new Captain America loses it and kills that guy with the sword with the shield. Some great there's some great moments in the in these movies right uh, or in these TV series. But there's, I want to see more. I want to see more. I want them to have more stakes, you know, and I want them to be taken more seriously. And I don't know if they are. And this, this, this show also, the the Hawkeye show, was very comedic. It's very comedic. There's like little, there's lots of lots of comedy in it. Again, going back to those tracksuit mafia guys, how can I take those seriously? You know, uh, I don't. And, and there's a lot of comedy, even the LARPing thing, which I really loved. There's a lot of comedy in this so far. So is, is that a good thing? I don't know. Um, Yes, uh, I am says yes. By someone else wearing the suit, those M- enemies he created would go after the new wearer. I, I guess. I suppose. Um, 3B Man, uh, which is Luke. I would like more development for Kate Bishop unless she's coming to a movie fast, but still a lot of episodes to go. Well, we're one third done. There's only six episodes. So two to, two, to, two to six is done. We only have four more to go. We're going to see Helena Belova as well. Where the new Black Widow is apparently coming into this. So we'll see what, what where she fits in. Uh, the character at the end of, of... Does anybody know who that character was at the end of episode two? That was Echo. 
Um, and the comics Echo is tied to the Kingpin, right? Luke, I think you were mentioning the Kingpin in one of my earlier shows. So there's definitely a tie in there. So we might see something with that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I hope it's, I hope it's, uh, I don't like to sour grapes, these things. Cause it's like, it's like the, it's like the masters of the universe, uh, series that came out. Um, you know, they, they had the first, I think it was a four or five episodes or something like that. And then it stopped. And then the second half is out now. I got to watch them actually, but people were shitting on that cart on that animated series. They were angry at that one. And, um, I didn't want to give it thumbs down until I saw the whole first season. I'm going to see it and I can finally, uh, say whether or not it was, you know, thumbs up or thumbs down. So I can't say that about this. This, this could have got off to a, you know, it has some really nice moments, like I said, but who knows it could turn out to be fantastic. Thank you. John Walker, us agent. Appreciate that. Spider-Man and the Doctor Strange hopefully will tie stuff together. And I'm hoping it will, Luke. I'm hoping it will. Uh, Bronzeville says, I think at times the TV series suffer from the fact that they have several more hours to fill, so things sometimes slow down. But isn't wouldn't that be a, the, the best time to actually spend time, just like Luke says, developing those characters? Right? Develop the characters. Did we really need to see so much of that of that tracksuit mafia like f- following her and stuff do we really need to see all that can we wait again i really think we needed more time with her growing without a father struggling to have no father coming to terms the fact her dad coming to terms she was in new york and seeing all that craziness right before her eyes you know the the post traumatic stress that, that would have you know caused her i want to see like her desire to become a protector. Like where, the, where was that born of? You know what I mean? It, it, we didn't get that. There was not that moment where it's like, no, no, there was not that, you know, with great power comes great responsibility moment. It wasn't there, you know? Um, now in a movie like Spider-Man, that's okay. Right. In a movie like Spider-Man, um, that's fine. Cause we know his origin story. We know his origin story. We know where he's, all, where he's been, where he's going. We know that. Batman, we know that. We don't need to see it over and over and over again because we've seen it 100,000 times. But we don't know this character, do we? We don't know who Kate Bishop is. We don't know where she's where she's from. She's not Spider-Man. She's not Peter Parker. She's not Bruce Wayne. She's not even Clark Kent. She's none of these characters. So to just expect us to open up and say, yeah, come on in. We're going to accept you and love you. No, that's not how it works. You need those moments for us to really get to like them. And they didn't give us those moments. Not yet, but they should have. They should have. They didn't even give us one, you know? And that, I think, is a dangerous thing. Luke, yeah, I think I saw something that Sony wanted to do, Sandman and someone else solo movie. Uh, yeah. Oh, they want to do a Craven. The, they're talking about Craven the Hunter store, a movie. There's all sorts of movies that Sony wants to do in the Spider-Verse. Um... And again, you don't necessarily have to do these solo movies to introduce these characters like Morbius or Venom. I mean, they're doing them because they're popular and they think they can make some good money off them in the, in the movies. But think about it. We, we When we saw Avengers, we only saw Hawkeye in a, in a post-credit scene, I think it was, right? Or no, no, Hawkeye was in Thor, but he's in it for a second. He was barely even in it. And... Um, in Avengers, she was a secondary character and towards until the end. And same with Black Widow. We saw her a little bit. We saw her a little bit in Iron Man, right? And then we saw her a little bit in, in some of the other movies leading up to the Avengers. And then we get her and we get him. And then then they start building those characters up. And that is what we needed. And that's not what we're getting here. Anyways. Well, guys, you know what? I'm gonna call it a night. That's it's a, it's been about 35 minutes. Oh, those are my first thoughts about um the Hawkeye series again I'm very interested to see where it is going the family I think um I think the family wasn't too excited about it I, you know usually my my kids are, and my wife are really um excited and happy about what we saw and I I was just kind of like, okay well let's we'll turn that off now <laughs> it wasn't like a wow you know there was nothing there like that and that's that that's a concern that's a concern man my my wife is not a fan girl and my my kids are not fanboys and fangirls they're they, they're they're fans but they're not like die hard so i think if the general public just regular joes are seeing something they're like yeah it was okay that's not good to me that's not good people like like people like us you know us diehards we're going to keep coming back because we, 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 it's our, it's our duty as comic book fans to come back. But people that are not comic book fans, 
They'll give it one shot, two shots, and if it's something that doesn't appeal, they're going to turn it right off. And that's a worry to me. Lily Cardellini is terribly underused. And this one she is. She's just on the phone. And even in the Avengers, she's she's not she's just a wife, right? Which is really Yeah. You know? But what a career she's had. Like what a career that woman's had. She is in all these different franchises. She's had a great, great career. She needs to be revealed to have been Mockingbird. Wait a sec. Oh, we don't know that though. That are that that's that's an interesting idea. That's an interesting idea. I never heard that. Have you heard that somewhere before, Brownsville? Because that's a cool idea. That is a cool idea. They need they need that Spider Man cheddar. They do. Don't worry. Spider Man's going to make a billion. It'll make a billion unless something happens with COVID in the next three weeks. The numbers go really crazy, and then they they start shutting theaters down again. Otherwise, I think that uh, three B the uh, three B men. I think that. Uh, the Spider-Man will make a billion and it'll be the first movie um, post-COVID to do that. And it's going to make stupid money opening weekend. Um, the TV show is good for a one-time watch. Listen, Disney, Disney, Disney Plus, before I go, uh, Disney Plus and Disney in general are not putting out enough content to keep up with... Uh, excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, my goodness. They're not putting out enough content to keep up with like Netflix and other competitors. And you'll you'll notice the stock, Disney stock has been going down, 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 which is no good because I bought some stock last year <laughs> at higher than it is right now. Um, but um, yeah, they, they've been criticized for not putting out enough content. And and yeah, you can, you can rest in your laurels, guys. You can rest on your laurels. Marvel, I hope they don't start doing that. Star Wars was do Star Wars did that. Um, yeah, Star Wars made a billion dollars. Uh, the Force Awakens and The Last Jedi and uh, The Rise of Skywalker, they were all billion dollar movies. Excellent, right? But guess what? Those movies hurt the franchise. It hurt the it divided the fandom. It hurt the fandom. It hurt it hurt it all. And, and now they're in this, you know, the Mandalorian's doing well and all those Star Wars series are looking really good, but the movies are in disarray. They don't know what they're doing. They have no idea what to do. And that was mismanagement. And that was people thinking, oh, it's Star Wars. Don't worry about it. People will come. People will come. And they did. But will they keep coming? Will they keep coming? I don't know, man. I don't know. Star Wars, that the name is popular, but if they keep giving you garbage over and over and over, people will 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 stop being interested. You know, I never would have thought Marvel would be more more popular than Star Wars. I never thought that. I really didn't, but it is. And and I don't want Marvel to go down that road as well. I don't want them to go down that road as well. Um, the Marvel TV show so. Far she needs to be revealed to have been Mockingbird okay uh, and then Bronzeville continu- continues my theory idea uh, he says and Mockingbird had a big part in Secret Invasion well yeah you never that's true she was a scroll, I think wasn't she and wow imagine <laughs> imagine Hawkeye's wife was a scroll. <laughs> that'd be pretty crazy <laughs> uh, the um, and uh, and the TV shows are good for a one time watch. Uh, Luke says that all these Marvel shows are good for a one time watch. Yeah, and that's and that's not good. That's not good. I believe there's a lawsuit for the rights for some Marvel characters for copyright creations. I don't know. Oh, you talk. Oh, oh, I think you're talking about. Um, there's a law now passed that once a certain amount of time goes by, there's a lot of news about this a couple of months back. <clears throat> but once, um, like for example. Um, uh, Steve Ditko, Stan Lee created Spider-Man. Uh, Marvel now owns it. But after so much time, uh, the rights laws in the state stipulate that the original rights holders can petition to get the rights back. That's a big thing that's going on right now. Um, so there's that. Uh, but that's it, I think. I think Marvel, other than that, I think Marvel owns everything except for the Sony stuff. Um, anyways, guys, that's it. I'm going to get the heck out of here. Thanks for popping by. You know what? If you're just getting here now, we're just talking about the Hawkeye, uh, the first two episodes of the Hawkeye, uh, miniseries. I would love to hear what you thought of it in the comment section below. 
Remember that by leaving comments here on my channel, at some point I have draws. And you know what? By leaving comments, you're automatically entered into a chance to win some of those crazy prizes that I'm giving out right now. The, the next prize I'm going to be giving out is a $250 gift certificate to comic book pressing and cleaning and grading by me the comic doctor and you know what it's a lot of time before then so you never i might put another couple prizes in there as well so um i'm gonna head out of here and yes luke you're right they are trying to stop that disney will fight that tooth and nail thank you so much luke you have a great night too and everybody else who's, who's tuned in thanks for popping by on your way out if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button if you haven't done so already again have a great night uh we'll see you soon i'm gonna be doing a video this week on the crazy things that could be happening in that upcoming Spider-Man No Way Home movie. Come back for that discussion as well. Come up with what, what do you think is the craziest things that could happen in that Spider-Man uh, No Way Home movie? Because there's a lot of crap that can go down. Let's talk about it. Probably later this week, Friday or Saturday. All right, guys. Have a great night. Bye for now.